talking. Welcome to the Wisdom Check by Tabletop to Keyboard. This is going to be our bi-weekly podcast where we discuss things such as Dungeons and Dragons. Actually, I think maybe we need to turn up my mic a little bit, guys. How about some more game? More game. This is the intro to end all intros. Talk about dungeons, dragons, and dragons. Now, now, I don't think that's proper. This is a family show, after all. This is the intro we could use, fellas. It's good, clean fun for everyone. Welcome to the Wisdom Check, where we have wholesome conversations about the dilemmas we face every day. Nah, nah, hold on a second. I got your intro right here. Yeah, that's better. Welcome to the Wisdom Check. Well, I'm right, just wrong. We're going to have guests on to talk about it. It's going to be awesome, because I said so. He is right. He did say so. I don't know. Is surf music the best music for a podcast about D&D? Fuck yeah. Okay. This just in. Nobody can agree on our intro for this podcast. So we're just going to start. Welcome to the Wisdom Check. Roll for initiative. Fuck. A one. It's like every time. Hey, everyone. Ah! Welcome to the Wisdom <laughs> Chef. I am, as always, Jeff. And with me this week is Levi again. We're Hi, everybody. Red for some reason, I think. Yeah, it's like we off. planned it. No, no, no. <laughs> Your colorblindness is accurate. We are wearing red. <laughs> it's great. One screen, you look orange. The other one, you look red. I <laughs> Um, it's okay. so We're red. <laughs> it, it's so good. So this week we don't have a guest, uh, because last week we had Larry Elmore on and we wanted to play a little loosey goosey and have the week open just in case he wanted to go with one or the other. And if you missed that episode, man, was it awesome. It's a lot. It's, yeah. man, it's a lot to process that one. I'm, I still fanboy about that. The coolest. Okay. So, so <laughs> here's our master plan. Like we've been kicking around like what little cons will attend and stuff. So I'm sorry to call back to Larry Elmore too much, but we're oh, talking about sure. trying to go to Gary Khan. And dude, if we could even like tease him into remembering us, <laughs> even if all we get is like, oh yeah, you were the guys that did that thing. I'd be like, we were the guys that did that thing. And I like, I'll lose my mind. So <laughs> Yeah, I'm working on uh, getting the, the video of that edited up and uploaded. So that'll be ready on YouTube soon. I was just watching it back and just like, it's it's so much fun. And it was, oh there's so many hilarious stories in there. So if you it's missed so it, good. get ready because it, it looks uh, like it's going to be a fun one to rewatch. Yeah. Good. And uh, God, there's some just hilarious. When he, when he randomly, when he randomly just drops that, oh, he died and was brought back. <laughs> yeah, I was like, what? oh, what? yeah. Okay. But we got to um, talk about now. We got to we got to talk well, about. Well, we decided that this week was a good week for us to get back into a fun topic. And this is a topic we touched on back in the day. I can't believe we already have it back in the day with this show. With uh, Stone Don't Fly. Fly. Yeah, we had an episode where yeah. we talked about how to get into character and one of the things we wanted to talk about was how to get into a voice, how to make something interesting yeah. and uh, come up with why certain voices should be certain ways. And on that episode, uh, you know, Dustin, myself and Stonefly, we had a lot of fun just making stupid voices and uh, just making ass of herself a lot of it. And it was great. But in the background, we had Levi and he was, oh, my God, get me out of the show. Get me out of the show. I want to talk about Because yeah. he does that. some great voices. And uh, no, he's not a professional voice actor. Early, I wish uh, that'd be like the coolest job. That'd but be uh, every single voice actor, ooh, uh, I'm gonna get the name wrong. Joe DiMaggio? No, 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 no. Mm, the voice Joe of DiMaggio. Bender. Oh no, no. Um, voice of I, Bender, everybody. Voice I know, I know of Jake the about. Dog. Somebody help me out in the chat. It's gonna Joe be DiMaggio? delayed. <laughs> John DiMaggio. Is John? I'm gonna get wrong. Anyway, he uh, felt that for the most part that his colleagues thank you arcos 440 oh it is john dimaggio 
he uh, felt that his profession is under-recognized, especially because their voices are seen, but their faces are never seen. Yeah. Yeah. So he did a really great, great documentary. I recommend to everybody called I know that voice and it showcases a ton of just voice actors. And there there's at least one or two people in that documentary where you know, their work, you just don't know what they look like. And it's like most of the guys in the Simpsons It's fantastic. <laughs> oh, fun fact. Yeah. I learned from that, which some of you might know and some of you don't. Tom Hanks' brother does such an accurate impression of Tom Hanks that whenever they need to do voiceover work for Woody and Tom can't come in, or if it's for merchandising or a toy or a short, they call his brother who subs as Tom Hanks. Huh. Crazy. It's crazy. And watching him do it is freaky. Um, anyway. Yeah, so I, I love voice actors, and I wish I could do that as a job, but I don't. I'm yeah. A teacher. So we, this is kind of relevant because this last game we just played of the Everstorm, <laughs> yeah. we had the introduction of a new NPC um, <laughs> we hadn't run into before, who has a fucking phenomenal voice. <laughs> and uh, if you missed that episode, uh, and Jeff is professional dad. No, surprisingly enough, I am probably the least kid having person in our group. <laughs> um, it's, it's, it's right in that cusp somewhere in there. I'm, I'm tied maybe, but uh, yeah. Yeah. you and Fulcrum, no kitties. Yeah. Uh, and I don't know with, I don't know with uh, California. We'll see be. who knows. There, there's a could be there, <laughs> but uh, yeah. So this, uh, this rando NPC shows up and <laughs> he is essentially this very bizarre devilish creature i guess yeah i can't go into too many details about what it is uh because they're the pcs are still discovering a bit but in short um i practice the voice a lot so i, I have you did. i have uh a half hour drive to work half hour drive back from work I spend a lot of that time listening to podcasts. However, if I have a game coming up, I practice voices in my car because um, <laughs> there's nobody there. So I just get uh, I just get done with it. And um, I learned, oh, God, this is a deep cut. I learned a long time ago I can do Stitch's voice, but this is before Lilo and Stitch came out. Oh, that is what that is. Yes. Mm. So um, it's where you take your voice and you pull it back into your throat like your mid swallow. And you can just, some people just can do that and some people can't. It is also how uh, Andy Circus does Gollum. It's the swallowing your voice. Uh, voice. Hmm. So um, I just literally did that. And then I tried to say, what if I do that swallowing my voice, stitch voice, and then I try and mix it with a dialect, like any other dialect. So I tried Southern, and I tried this, that, and the other. And the one I landed on is like trying to remember to stay Russian while doing that voice. And it was a cool new thing I hadn't done before. And the guys have heard so many of my voices that it's, hard to not repeat yeah. myself like we have two npcs in the game right now to be very careful that they never share the same time or never even near each other chronologically because they sound almost identical and i know because the guys have already made fun of it so uh <laughs> one of them is the magpie which oh. is a female pirate um who's like mine ah! and like she sounds like that and then I also have them having met this uh, witch character who's like, ah, skis are. And so I realized they do sound damn near identical. So now I have to, if I ever come back to one, I have to retcon and kind of switch it up. So uh, there's that. Anyway, uh, that voice came from back in the day. I was watching a TV show. I think it was like something stupid, like America's Funniest Home Videos. And they made a, some guy started sending them in shorts <laughs> of <laughs> a... This is so messed up. A uh, taxidermy 
doll of the mythological jackalope. <laughs> the jackalope is a southwestern fake creature that doesn't exist. It's a jack- you know what's funny? There's one in my freaking closet. Awesome. I, I uh, actually think I might go get that while you're talking. I'll be right back. Go, go get a jackalope. A jackalope is a jackrabbit with antlers. And then somebody on America's Funniest Home Videos back in the day, or some clip show like that, started trying to produce videos of it with a dumb voice. And this is pre-YouTube. So it would be the kind of thing that now would be its own YouTube channel of just that. Anyway, um, he had... Oh, he's got it. We're ready. He has a taxidermy jackalope, and it's glorious. The, you are so on point with your game right now. You have like, why does this thing exist? I, have I don't no know. Idea, but my landlord had it in the closet. This it, is it, it, Your it, landlord it, had a jackalope? Yeah, this thing lives with my washer and dryer for some reason. So I okay. use it for a voice. <laughs> so that thing, they gave it a little like body, but they put it in clothes, which is really twisted. Anyway, it had a dumb catchphrase, and it said, "Fast as fast can be, you'll never catch me." <laughs> and so, ever since that came on, I, as a kid, tried to mimic it, and that's when I realized I could do the swallowing your voice bit. And then. Years later, Lord of the Rings comes out, and that's when, if you do the jackalope voice, but if you gravel it up a little bit, you get Gollum, Gollum, and you, you oh, get man. that Gollum voice. It is exactly and, how you do that. And it's like, Smeagol, you just push it up a little higher, and you take away all the gravel, and then you don't have any friends. And it's the exact same voice. It's just, you're living in the back of your throat. So if I'm talking and then like this, yeah, 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 you're purr. Oh, God, this is so terrible. Yeah, it hurts after a while. So <laughs> while you're talking, you start to pull it back, and then it's in the back of your throat, and you are mid swallow. So you have to over enunciate. Um, over enunciate. Yes. Oh, that sounds exactly like this. Yes, you have to be very careful. And I'm um, almost strange. <laughs> yeah. And uh this and then I got so excited because when uh Lilo and Stitch came out, I was just like, Oh, it's just the Gollum voice. It's just you know, Lilo and Stitch or Hannah means family. So they make they make Stitch sound a little bit more breathy. Yeah, but Jar Jar hmm. is a little like that, Arcos, but Jar Jar's like Misa Jar Jar. Yeah, I guess it is. I guess it is. Misa Jar Jar Bing, sir. Misa. Yeah, I hate oh, that. Oh man. Gonna, that I'm not going to spend all night doing that. I'm unbelievably gonna spot on. Stab <laughs> myself. So <laughs> once you slide in the back of your throat, it just opens up more. And so the cool thing is, it's not unlike a palette of paint or like a foley artist. If you can do one where you actually modify your voice, like mm -hmm. instead of well, an easy one is doing girl voice and girl sure. voice for any guy, they always cheat and do the same thing. Um, yeah, we're gonna have to pause here though because we need to restart the stream. Ah! Our, our lag is too extreme, so bear with us for just a moment, folks. We're gonna restart it. We're gonna fix Freak. this problem, and we'll come back. We'll do some of these voices you guys are recommending. Freeze! Freeze frame. <laughs>
It's, it's hard to tell because the stream is oftentimes super delayed. We could be live right now, and I could be making sounds I'm into so the darkness. Creepily into the dark. Huh? I'm pretty sure I see myself now loading up. Just me talking. <laughs> I see myself. Okay. Oh, a Twitch ad. Perfect. All right. So I think we are back, and we were in the midst of talking about some nonsense. Because that's mm. what we do best. <laughs> and Levi was talking about girl voices. Uh, yeah. That's so, not something I can do. So if you got a trick. Uh, but I yeah, Eddie, you can do girl voice. So, uh, uh, so the funny thing is I was, I was literally talking to a vocal teacher about this and I didn't know. Um, Americans talk wrong. Uh, well, <laughs> we do. Of course we do. Of course um, we do. We speak <laughs> wrong in the sense that from a vocal perspective, we move. America has a love affair with confidence mm -hmm. uh, because if, if there's one thing America is great at is confidence that does, I don't necessarily think it's a good thing though, because that also means that like, and I've seen comedians break this down and other people that basically when you compare us in education <laughs> and then you compare us in confidence levels, that means an American doctor can sell you that you are in good hands. <laughs> but statistically speaking, you might be in better hands with another doctor. So that said, uh, our love affair with confidence implies that we think a commanding, deep, and powerful voice is ultimately better. So Americans seat their voices back and low. Back and low. Right. Yeah, just like, <laughs> see, I'm talking to the king alone. <laughs> So technically, if I were to use my voice properly, I have to make it more breathy and move it up a little bit. So if I were to have a conversation with you now, I'm using my natural voice. And uh, the way I was taught to do it, the trick to get yourself into what should be your voice, which if mm. I were to do this constantly the way I'm doing it now, I, my voice would last longer and I would get more out of it because I've pushed the breath up a little higher. So the trick is you stick down and you go... And if you put your chin on your chest and you breathe out and vocally sigh, then you're doing your actual voice the way it's supposed to be. So you're saying it's like up in my nose up here. It's a little more breathy, but it you're pretty high. No, no, no. You're pushing it into nasal and nasal is to push it through the front of your noise, your, your voice. Okay. Uh, oh, do I have a teacher voice? Um, oh. My teacher voice is my voice but it's more commanding. It's definitely more assertive. All my students believe <clears throat> wholeheartedly. I know what I'm talking about because yeah. the moment, the moment I sense they think I don't know what I'm talking about. I will purposely say something self deprecating with confidence, <laughs> which is like a comedian <laughs> trick. Yeah. Like comedians will do that. So like, Oh, he's making fun of himself. And then I'll whip it back around motivational speaker style to like, if you listen to me, I can take you on the right path. And then if I just say that assertively and look at them and talk with my hands a little bit like I'm doing right now, they believe everything I say. <laughs> confidence. Because confidence is the love affair of America. We love a confident person, even if they're wrong. Um, so. Phone voice. Okay. Oh, breathy. So like. Hey everybody, we're here with Jeff and TG2KB. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's have it rolling on back through the uh, stacks and let's see if we can uh, get ourselves some good tunes going. Oh, that's good. Well, so, hello there. It's Jeff here speaking on the phone with <laughs> who do I have on the line today? <laughs> let's see do i have a massage a voice? massage voice uh, oh yeah, well i mean i guess it's basically the same voice i normally have it's just uh you know it's just very proper i guess just more of a uh just hmm, how would i describe Art it articulated like scientific almost to make them feel comfortable uh it, it's very professional so it's very just um uh i don't not necessarily relaxed but like I, I definitely bring it back to a very calm, very. Oh, pointed. that's good. Everything is very just. Hi, how are you? My name's Jeff. Very to be here with you today. Dude, yeah, yeah, I like that. So I like that. I'm going to go back. To that's the room like a, today. Like you're doing an NPR voice. Yeah, you know. So that's great. 
This is my ASMR voice ready for your you. Your ASMR voice. Uh, if you're prepared for a little bit of cheesy ass smiles, that's, that's what I've happened. got. Okay. Yeah. So um, <laughs> let's slide back to the idea of a palette. So if you're trying to voice act for your players or 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 a character you're going to want to. First off, you got to decide where your voice is. Is it low in the back of your throat? Are you moving it purposely as far back as you can? Are you going to swallow it on the mm -hmm. right floor? Or are you going to keep it where it is and then instead just raise the pitch a little bit and go a little bit more breathy? Because this is an easy cheat as a male to try and just have to sound more feet. You're just softening it and moving it more breathy. And you're sort of moving it into the chamber of your mouth instead of in your throat at all. Mm -hmm. And I've raised my pitch. So if I were doing a man and doing this, it would be right here. But if I just raise it up, then it's more feminine. Because I want to sound feminine without sounding like a stereotype. So I'm going to try and do is try and change my pitch a little bit. Because yeah, the hardest thing is to God, avoid a stereotype. Oh, and laser then... In bed, huh? you're, you're crapping out on us already? Sorry, Air Laser. Cool. But thanks for coming in. <laughs> yep, thanks. And then uh, from there, you can also push it forward up into your nose. If you're going to try and push nasal. And that is called head voice. And head, head voice... voice yes. Mm. Uh, Men can do head voice. Women, it's not quite the same because hmm. to do head voice is simply pushing a woman's voice to a higher pitch. Don't ask me why. Again, I had a conversation with a choir teacher that studies voice and the way it works. And so to do head voice is to sing through your nose. And this is what you always hear um, Aziz Ansari mm -hmm. do when his Aziz Ansari's yeah. actual voice is kind of head voice. Like whether he means to or not. Um, so you have those as your palates. That's what you can actually do to your throat. And then you combine that with any dialect you've played with. And then you now have a whole palette. So uh, brain fart, easiest thing in the world is, is, is base British, mm -hmm. right? Because that's in all of D and D, you know, sure. we're medieval. Everybody's British, uh, elves, fancy British, you know, it doesn't matter. <laughs> Pick your British. So, you know, if you have I'm British now versus I'm British now, sorry, I'm British now versus I'm British now versus I'm British now versus I'm British now versus I'm British now. Where are you going? What would you like to do? Um, uh, how would you like to have high tea this afternoon? And all I've done is mess with the location of voice and throat. Hmm. Add a dialect. And I got out of that combo of two, I got about five different voices. That is pretty freaking awesome. That's what I usually do. And then I play with what I, and then the hardest part is a DM side. So DMs, that's where you're at. Um, do you have norms in your game? And so we've established yeah. a couple of norms. Um, I decided for funsies that uh, I wanted to split my dwarves. So hill dwarves are Scottish. They are not too hard to Scottish. Uh, I, I sometimes I roll it back and I make it a little bit more conversational and I don't try to push it so hard. Um, I just make it like it's sitting here in my, my, my mouth. I try not to roll my arse to it very much and to hmm. try and keep it like, I don't know, like, like, like a lower version of Craig Ferguson. Uh, but <laughs> it's not quite the same because Craig Ferguson's up here. He keeps yeah, it, he uh, oh, I, oh, I was going to do this, but, um, you know, I, I couldn't figure out how to do any of that voice, the Scottish voice at all. Scottish is hard. Day, I kind of figured it out. Nice. So I'm pretty sure it has to do with your, the, like the front third of your tongue hitting the front of your uh, of upper your... palate. So right. Yes. Behind your so think I'm doing that. I so am. I'm when doing you're that. talking like this, it goes up and just jumps right in there. That's not bad. It's not bad in considering I'm usually quite terrible at this one. <laughs> it's, it's really not one that I'm used to because uh, I think my speech pattern is the opposite of that normally. Oh, uh, nice. Well, I, I can't recommend enough. Just listen to dialects. Uh, watch a lot of BBC if you want to pick up some European dialects. You'll, True story. You'll pick them up fast. Uh, um, well, also, I don't know. With your last name being what it is, I think you have an instinct. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, Stone Fly. We're doing voices. Hey, today. Stone Fly. We're doing a sequel with your with your blessing, <laughs> Stone Fly. Good times. I, so, now I gotta wait. I gotta wait for her blessing. Mm -hmm. Um. So, 
I can't do anything but sound like Justin Long. Air <laughs> <laughs> Lasers mentioned that before. Yeah, that uh, was last week. Last week, I think. Yeah. So <laughs> that's I can do it. So I made all hill dwarves Scottish because mm. why not? But then I made all deep dwarves or mountain dwarves. Uh, I made them Russian. You have to swallow the back of your voice. It's the yeah, idea. It's definitely in the back. I'm going to have. Uh, I'm going to have it. Uh, they're in the dark, and uh, you normally expect a Russian voice always sounds very relaxed. It doesn't sound like it is trying too hard. Even if you have an excited Russian, it doesn't sound like they're very excited. It sounds sort of very chill. And I like the idea of playing out that uh, we're in the dark, we're in the tunnels, and that a low tone will carry for many, many miles. And yeah. so I want to have that. Um, I haven't really broken up my elves. My elves are, they are better than you. Because it is the American's perspective that any British accent automatically sounds more intelligent and capable and to a degree confident and definitely, uh, above all, clever. And so, in that sense, in Soviet Russia, I had to say it, Air Laser, you, you have know. to. It's, it's prompted, uh, it's ready to roll. In Soviet Russia. And uh, so then, yeah, those are my go tos. And uh, the funny thing is, we didn't have a standard in my, our campaign for what halflings sound like, and that was established by Clint. Yeah, amazingly enough. Clint established, amazingly. and the funny thing is, he was just going with a new version of his British accent, but he made it like a slight street cockney, a, a, a British of a commoner that is that sounds less educated whether or not they are more mm -hmm. like working class British. And the funny thing is I liked it so much. We just sort of adopted it that now most halflings Clint has created canon. Um, because the one thing I established that halflings are nomadic mm -hmm. and from a societal standpoint, they leech onto other societies because they don't have their own except to connect to other ones and form symbiotic relationships due to service. So, I kind of like that uh, you push it to the front of your mouth. It is not in the back of your throat. It is right up here, next to your teeth and next to your lips. And you're mm. pushing a lot, so you get a lot of consonants. And uh, this is your regular halfling. Hello, I'm halfling. Nice to meet you. How are you doing today? Pleased to meet you. Halfling so, revolution. So you're really just jamming it. No, oh, that's not how you're doing it. So you're jamming it like right up by your teeth, you're saying. I am taking my voice and I'm pushing it to the front of my mouth. So it's all about so right pushing here. it to the front of your mouth. Something yeah, right Arcos okay. 440 is right. Um, if I were to do Wrighton, oi, it's Wrighton. Hello. Oh, it's nice Wrighton. to meet you. Oh, no, this is not. This is uh, Lindell. This is Lindell. Yeah, it is Lindell. Yeah, yeah. This, is, uh, this is Lindell. Lindell, uh, purposely. Is a little bit more, you hear the shh, shh, shh. You mm -hmm. hear the more of the shears when I'm talking. Mm -hmm. And I am purposely swallowing more L's. You do not hear an L. It is a little L that comes after J -O -J -K -O -M -N -O -P. It's probably and no W as well. So I water. Am, right. W water. 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 You know, we both you know, know, tea, we're going out in the water today. Yeah. Uh, so today, if it's a start of a sentence, it's water in the middle. Middle, <laughs> not middle, middle. middle. And uh, yeah. if I were to do Lindell and just push it a little bit cleaner and then make it, yes, yes, sir. Are Please you going out to the sub? Are you going out again tonight? Because I'm Michael Kane and Michael Kane. Some men just want to watch the world burn. And oh, I don't man, have a great Michael Kane, like I've heard way bad. better. Oh, that's not bad. Simon Pegg's Michael Caine is fucking killer. I really enjoy his guy, <laughs> Michael Caine. Um, and yeah, yeah, Michael Caine, it sounds like a intelligent Cockney. It's just kind of cool how he pulls that. Um, but yeah, yeah, that's crazy voices. So honestly, your, your trick, everybody, is get any voice you can do and then figure out where it sits in your mouth and what the pitch is. And then see if you can hold it there and then mix things up. So, like one of the ones I tried in the car that sounded real weird 
So, hey, everybody. <laughs> when I was trying to figure out what spindle sounded like. Oh, man. <clears throat> so good. I knew I wanted to pull my voice into the back of my throat. However, if I'm pulling my voice into the back of my throat, and then I also make it like a gravel it up a little bit so he sounds a little evil. Mm-hmm. And I want him to sound a little sinister, so I don't want him to sound too nice, so I make him sound evil. And then after I move him sound evil, I'm like, hmm, I can't just do this, because this sounds exactly like an NPC from an old campaign called Hex. And Hex was a NPC parasite thing that was oh. attached. It was attached to a character's chest. And he sounded like this. So I, I can't be Hex again. I have to sound totally different. So I'm like, well, what if I do this voice and uh, it's like, uh, you know, we're going on down to the creek in the hollow and we're going to go riding on our horses and maybe we're going to shoot ourselves some rabbit. <laughs> and I was like, here I am and I'm doing it. Uh, you can't tell me nothing like what to do. And then shit fire. <laughs> and I'm gonna do myself my own country voice, except <laughs> it is a goblin or something like that. And that is Meatwad. You're absolutely right, Kobe. That uh, is 100% Meatwad. Wow. Meatwad is in the back of the throat. It's like, hey guys, why don't you try to tell me that? It's just like, I'm Meatwad. Uh, you guys need to shut up. <laughs> and Meatwad is just like a low class golem. So it's really weird when you mix it up. Um, so instead of going country with it, mm-hmm. I was like, Southern sounds weird. So what if I make it Russian? Mm-hmm. So what if I do Russian with that? And that's where Spindle came from. So Spindle sounds like he's going to see you into the basement, but you should not be messing with me right now because if you're going to do that, I'm going to have to cross your toes with a hammer. <laughs> <laughs> and somehow this character has come across as really just affectionate. And uh Yes, I am full of truth and you can absolutely trust me. <laughs> the most lovable evil we've ever come across. <laughs> yeah, Air Laser. Uh Air Laser is representing Canada. Uh yeah. sup, Air Laser. I'm a big fan of your country. That's um good country. Air Laser, not to go on too big of a tangent, but I have fallen in love with Jared Kiso's Letter Kenny on Hulu, and that is my basis for Canadian accents, if that is at all accurate, in that most people don't have one on the show, except that they have, like, uh, dialect slang words that don't exist down here. Hmm. Northern Alberta, yes, okay, sweet. No, Berta Beef, right? It's the best beef, Berta Beef? Gotta be bird of beef. That's a deep cut. Yeah, I know. Sorry. Uh, I like uh, letter uh, Kenny. Uh, 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 no. Uh, <laughs> I'm getting, I'm getting Canada references. I can do that all day. Okay. Um, so I don't know. Do we want to do, let's do some doing? requests? Yeah, let's do requests. What dumb thing do you want us to do? And while you're coming up with that, let's, uh, I'm really interested in all the, the, the style, like the actual technique behind it. Um, you know, like one of the ones like kind of fell into the other day after having last week's conversation was I started sounding a lot like I was from Southern Illinois again. (laughs) I couldn't figure out what was happening. And then it occurred to me why everyone sounded the way they did where we grew up. And it was because everybody dips. And if you don't know what dipping is, it's where people are chewing tobacco and they have in the front of their lip. They keep it right here. So, you know, I start out this here. So like the bottom part of your mouth can't move. Yeah, it's got to stay that way. So if you get something in there, you know, you just start talking. You just can't move your mouth too much. And it all just kind of falls out of your face like this. Yeah. And that's how, if you just start talking like a, you're just doing a normal thing, it's, it's just going to sound like this. And I realized that's where almost all of our dialect comes from. Has to be yeah. from people dipping. <laughs> it's all, it just it's all dipping. Used to. The whole <laughs> state. Uh, okay. Oh, God. Are we Christopher Walken. Christopher Walken. Okay, um, everybody does a walk in. Mine's not great. Um, you know, that's my hook. You try and lead with it and say, I kept this uncomfortable hunk of metal up my ass. <laughs> and now I'm going to sit with you 
and hand it to you. And you take it. And you just pause like you're thinking. No, that's all I got. So and I so I, I don't have a great walk in. Um three little mice hanging out in a milk bucket. <laughs> <laughs> One mouse turns to the other, says, Hey, what are we doing? Yeah. <laughs> Just, just uh, a little dip. <laughs> I, I heard Morgan Friedman. Um, yeah, how's Morgan Friedman go? Um, <laughs> hold on. Uh, Bruce, I'm God. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see. Uh, March of the Penguins. Oh, man, I need to hear yeah, some of it just to get people it People like the sound of my voice, and I'm sitting in a room with walls that look like egg crates. And the air look, and the walls look spongy. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, no, that's not it. Um, well, he's tricky, and I, I don't love my my Morgan tricky. Freeman. It's very monotone. But the funny thing is, everybody's impression of Morgan Freeman is not actually what he sounds like for the most part, because no. he does have levels. It's the it's the it's the pacing. I think yeah. is really what it sells, you know. Yeah, um, but I can't figure out where he is in the mouth, like. Because it's a um, voice, it feels like it has to be in the back, but I, it's not where it sits. No, uh, for Morgan Friedman, and I use his voice as my hook, I keep it uh, in the chamber of my mouth, but I don't move it into the back of my throat. Because he's from and Mississippi, I right? Down. I have to end down on this note. Oh, yeah. Sometimes yeah. it always helps to end down, like you're thinking. Hmm, <laughs> yes. I am God. And so it's like there's a song quality to Freeman, which is yeah, great. there is. Um, um, what else are we going to do? Hmm. I like taking requests. This is fun. yeah, the requests are good. I got it. Oh, a yeah, I got a big. Do- OK, so we haven't streamed this. There we go. Morgan is not impressed with us. Like, nope. He, he listened and he was like, like, Jeff, don't even try. He's like, <laughs> y'all shouldn't be doing that. Um. So, Andy, Andy Dufresne. Dufresne. That is right. Anytime. Andy Dufresne. <laughs> Andy Duf- Nope. Andy Dufresne. Nope. Andy Dufresne crawled through miles of shit and terrible. <laughs> <laughs> get busy living or get busy dying. Oh, Jesus. Uh, French accent. So, oh, no. French accents. Yes. Oh, no. Okay. I can't believe you guys did this to us. No. No. Dude, they're so gonna, they're bad. not gonna regret it. Okay, oh, I no. don't do a good French accent. It is not good. So here's what happens. So we have yet to stream this, but we got into Sea of Thieves, and so it does. It that is that is the goal. Uh, <laughs> so we got to Sea of Thieves, and we're like, what are we gonna do? What are we gonna do? And then Clint uh, is Clint is diehard Monty Python. <laughs> Holy Grail, whole nine yards. So, um, he's like, "What if you do an outrageous French accent? We just like make it really stereotypical, stereotypical, really bad on purpose." I was like, um, "I'm like, I don't know if I could do a French accent." And so then I just started doing it, and now it's like the demon that showed up and won't go away. <laughs> it's so bad. <laughs> it is very nice. I was going. Yes, uh, hop on my ship and you ride with me along the waves. And <laughs> you're going to hop on my ship and have a baguette. Oh, and I'm going to make the ridiculous to drag out all of my consonants and my vera vowels and to swallow them in the back of my throat. And occasionally I go up and occasionally I go down. And you are said, I'm French. <laughs> Why don't you think I have an outrageous accent? <laughs> French <laughs> Lavash. <laughs> I told them we already got one. Um, and yeah, I, I do it that in Sea of Thieves. Like strong bad, yeah. <laughs> uh, time to check the emails. Uh, <laughs> that, time that, to check all the emails. <laughs> I hope it's from a female. <laughs> uh, first name it was a dragon, <laughs> then it was a man, and it was a, a dragon man. And it's all just like Chugda! <laughs> I could do that all day. Uh, hold on. Oh, yeah. um, it's long bad. Yes, I 
can oh, Stewie. do wow. Stewie. Um, and uh, it's Fat Man. <laughs> Where are you going, Fat Man? Uh, why am I saying what in what way? Um, Stewie's easy because Stewie <laughs> is... Uh, he's... Well, if you didn't know, um, Stewie is uh, Seth MacFarlane's version of Rex Harrison. And Rex Harrison is a famous uh, a British actor. And uh, he is a little bit effeminate. And so that's where Stewie's based off of. And Fat Man. And uh, yeah, then I can also do uh, Peter. <laughs> <laughs> and that's my favorite. Uh, my favorite is when he sings a song. He's like, hey, Joe. <laughs> Don't push me, Joe. <laughs> Quagmire. And uh, Damn, dude, uh, that is spot on. <laughs> uh, yeah, Lois. Uh, <laughs> Lois, Lois, Lois. This is not my pep and glass. <laughs> <laughs> That's my favorite one. Miss Clifton! Miss Clifton! Miss Clifton! Ah! <laughs> oh, I can do bra I can do that all day. Um, how, how much did you practice this? Oh, I when Family Guy first came out, I could do Stewie and and Peter after a couple watchings. I just because McFarland just made shit up, mm -hmm. like um, because Peter is his version of that east coast accent in rhode island that's mm -hmm. what it is uh these guys that have all these opinions about all this stupid stuff you know <laughs> uh <laughs> sorry i could do that <laughs> uh, and then quagmire's just in the back of your throat it's like <laughs> gee, gee, gee. Yeah. are you 18 no <laughs> all right <laughs> and then that's just it's it's like a radio dj it's it's all the back of the morning crew hey, hey. But it's just in the back of your throat. Giggity, 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 coo. <laughs> giggity, 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 <laughs> giggity, 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 Oh, that's so good. <laughs> hey, hey, Peter, what's going on? Hey, Brian. Oh, well, he hates Brian. I love that. <laughs> Let's see. I, th I can do like, uh, I think I can do Yogi. <laughs> like, oh, oh, that's good. Yeah. Yogi. Well, hey there, Yogi. Yogi. Uh, Yogi, I don't think we should be stealing any picnic baskets. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, that, that's pretty close. And then, um, God, what's another one I could probably do? I don't know. What, what else do we got on here, guys? You got some other requests that we missed on there? I can do this all night. I love doing dumb voices. I love doing them too much. Oh, yeah, for, uh, yeah, Boo Boo was Timberlake. I heard about that. Seriously? You want me to do Letter Kenny? <laughs> letter I can't do a Letter Kenny. That's Wayne right there. Uh, hold on. Uh, you're hanging out with your friends. You're ha so on. I got friends at the produce stand the other day. A couple of hockey players come up the laneway the other day. And then uh, it's always, uh, how are you now? Uh, oh, not so bad. And you, uh, damn it. How are you now, Wayne? Oh, not so bad. And you? Oh, not so bad. Uh, and I can do that all day. What show is this? Letter Kenny. Oh, hi, friends. <laughs> Please check out Letter Kenny on Hulu for yourselves. Here's what it is. Letter Kenny is a great story. It is basically the exact same story as It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia about how the show got made in that the guys from It's Always Sunny got sick of auditioning and not getting roles. And when they got roles, they weren't great roles. They just got shoved into whatever. So they're like, let's write our own show, and then nobody can tell us what to do. And so that led to It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia. So Jared Kiso, you're softer than tucking 10 ply, bud. <laughs> hey there, big shoots. <laughs> Whoa, we're getting oh my God. The subs again. Fruit bomb. Man. Fruitzilla Holy is shit, up to fruit 20 bomb. total subs in our channel. That is phenomenal. Fruitzilla, uh, with big kid moves like that, nobody's sitting at the, at the little kid's table come Thanksgiving, eh? <laughs> come on there, big shoots. All right. Oh, man. Uh, so, Letterkenny, 
Uh, Jared Kiso is in the middle of the stream right now. That's Jared Kiso. He's from a small logging town in Canada. His dad runs a lumber mill. Mm -hmm. And he's like, I'm just going to write a show about rural Canada, which there's only a couple that are like it. I guess Corner Gas is kind of like it, but Corner Gas feels like a more of a scripted show, whereas well, Letterkenny like, feels more unique. Yeah, um, I mean, there was like what Red Green Show was kind of like that. Or yeah, like, um, or, uh, and so Letterkenny feels like the Office in rural Canada, in that there are a lot of times that they talk directly to the camera, and imply breaking the fourth wall without actually doing it. Hmm. And it focuses on three subgroups in Canada, Hicks, Skids, and hockey players. Um, Hicks are, are Hicks, me, yeah. uh, me, Clint, we're Hicks. We grew out in the middle of nowhere. Um, and Skids are uh, angry, small town, metalhead video goths that do a lot of meth, which... Wow. We are also familiar with because yep. that's every small town in America. We've met some people like that. Yeah. And then the last one is hockey players. And the best thing is, I'm sorry, this turned into letter Kenny ad, but I'll fucking talk about letter Kenny all day. Um, <laughs> uh, one of my students is actually a national champion, female hockey player with a ring. She wore class one day. Fucking cool. And, Dude. uh, she, I started, I asked her, I, I showed her a clip of the letter Kenny hockey and she starts rolling laughing because they said a lot of stuff like, um, all hockey players name each other with a, with a Y. Hey there, Pansy. Hey, Clintsy, uh, Kamsy, Oglesy. It's, it's, it's an E at the end of everything, buddy. And everything's buddy and Bardownskis and slap bombs and, uh, gotta, gotta, gotta mess the biscuit, buddy. And the biscuits, the puck, buddy. Um, uh, so I just did another gift just to prove that our UI was working right. And uh, we also got a follow in there. So thank you for that. <laughs> Bruce still is the bomb. It really is, man. So good. Okay. Yeah, Bruce I think the like nickname is definitely a thing, right? Yeah. I don't, I don't know, know, but I, I fucking love Letter Kenny. Okay. So back to voices. Uh, we keep getting requested for Octane from Apex, but uh, I don't know who that is. Octane from Apex is the second the first additional character beyond the original set i know he's latino and he's like a he's like a juicer from riffs like he purposely mm. uh injects an adrenaline shot that makes him fast i know apex I, legends a game i just don't remember this character yeah i haven't played that. enough of apex uh sorry octane people i haven't played enough of apex to accurately shoot for octane so i'd rather research and try and do it right before i do it wrong let me so. see if i can get a voice real quick try to pull up a little audio clip uh oh i know he's like an excitable and i know he's younger nah it's not playing any audio for me <laughs> kevin from the office <laughs> kevin's cookie monster that's what he is and that's he's real slow and they said i was gonna bring in my special chili and then he spills the chili it's the so guys look how much how many <laughs> m, m i can stick in my mouth no that's <laughs> kevin Simpsons. don't want to use too many words <laughs> uh uh let's see simpsons simpsons uh, yes, Smithers. It's time to release the hounds. Uh, uh, yeah, yes, sir. I, I will release them right away. Um, let's see. Uh, I can't do a yes, good Ned Flanders. Smithers. Yeah, that's a good one. That's a good one. Smithers. Uh, uh, Moe's Tavern. Yeah, I'm uh, a good one. Yeah. <laughs> Who is this? <laughs> I swear to God, I'm going to find you and still. Hey, Lee Holy there, neighbor. Oh, it's not bad. <laughs> not there. Uh, Oh, we got, um, we got Homer. Uh, can I just buy me a 50? Uh, Damn, I'm so a good. plow king. <laughs> oh. <laughs> uh. <laughs> oh, man, that was really good. <laughs> Let's see. Um, uh, hey, Homer. Let's see. Uh, I can't do a decent Homer. 
Uh, this is what uh, Dan Castanella is the voice for Homer. And when you see him do Homer's voice, he pulls back like this a little bit, like like he's trying to swallow his own throat, kind of. But he doesn't actually do it. Um, <laughs> Bake him away, toys. What would you say there, Chief? Uh, you do it the kid. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, don't. Is, is, don't. That's, that's a pretty easy one to do. Don't. I could do uh, dough all day. Yeah, yeah, that's that's it. Morge. You just got sound moaning, I suppose, but I'm not great on Homer. Uh, but I can do uh, <laughs> I can do Quimby all day. Um, that's where I met the leprechaun. He told me to burn things. I'm and... in danger. <laughs> 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 I'm in danger. Uh, Ralph Wiggum is the king. Okay. Oh man. So we should do Millhouse. Um, uh, Millhouse doesn't really have a voice. Uh, Millhouse doesn't have a voice. It is the worst voice ever. <laughs> and like a comic book man. <laughs> hmm. I suggest we make the rules for uh, a copulation uh, once every uh, three years, which is the Vulcan cycle of mating, which would drastically increase my own. <laughs> oh, Quimby's the mayor. I'm thinking a chief. It's been a long time since I've watched a lot of Simpsons. I apologize, Simpsons fans. Uh, May uh, Quimby is uh, just a bad JFK impression. You are uh, just to do a bad JFK and drag it out. And you are uh, a, a uh, May uh, Quimby. Oh, that's so good. SpongeBob. Mm, this is going to be ugly. I apologize because I haven't tried to do SpongeBob. I can do Patrick Star. SpongeBob, you just have to do Patrick and you just lower your voice and you kind of push it out. Um, and I can do Mr. Krabs. Uh, no, that's not Mr. Krabs. I got to lower. SpongeBob, that's Mr. Krabs. Mr. Krabs is just a pirate. <laughs> He's just a pirate. Um, oh, the best thing is, fans, uh, there's only the oldies that are going to know it. Um, but oldies, uh, Sponge, Mr. Krabs' voice mm -hmm. is the Kurgan from Highlander. What? It's Clancy Brown. Holy the shit. The Kurgan from Highlander is Mr. Krabs. That is and really hard he's to also the intro voice. Hey, kids! Like, that's Mr. Krabs. It's him. <laughs> So we need a picture of that. So get the Kurgan up there for us. Get the Kurgan and get Mr. Krabs. That's the best. Because this, this it's is so be fucking special. crazy. Uh, um, man, a beholder. Understand. Yeah, what would it be? I mean, there's there's so many takes on the beholder. Uh, the okay. series tile. Are we talking well, about goofy kind of animated series? Well, uh, mm -hmm. Gandalf, Kobe, Gandalf is. Uh, <laughs> Yes. <laughs> <laughs> That's fantastic. That's glorious. Oh, uh, man. I, I see that just sounding like Kevin. Boston <laughs> Lamb Shout uh, uh, Oh, man. That's that a great great. Uh, Frodo Baggins, be careful about. Do not be so quick to tell about death and destruction. I do not know. Gandalf is <clears throat> very knowledgeable, uh, but at the same time, breathy. <laughs> yes, and occasionally, like he's in the middle of a thought, and at the same time, like he's uh, swallowing some of his words. And hey, that's my Gandalf. Uh, goodbye, Locutus. Uh, thanks for calling us awesome. Yeah. SpongeBob. Uh, hmm. Spongebob. The funny thing is I can do Ice King and both are Tom Kenny. Tom Kenny is both Ice King and Spongebob. Hey, Pat. Oh, hold on. Hey, Patrick. <laughs> uh, <laughs> is that it? No. Let's see. What are some lines I can use? Gary, I feel like I have to be up here. I have to keep it in my head voice. And this is, this is Spongebob. I think, but I don't think that I'm quite right. But, uh, Fruitzilla, I, I like my Ice King. Hold on. <clears throat> hey, you guys. Uh, 
guys, can I come hang out with you? You guys are so cool. Uh, uh, the crown. It teaches me the, 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 the secrets of ice and snow. It whispers to me, uh, I need a princess. Uh, you guys know I'm really nice. Can you tell her that I'm nice? So. Oh, I can't do Jake from Adventure Time because it's just John DiMaggio's voice. Sorry, Kobe. <laughs> it's just his voice. I can't do it. Um, but I like doing Ice King. He's fun. Goons. Where's my goons? Um, so. <laughs> uh, hey, I thought we had the idea of. I can't do Finn. <laughs> Finn's just sounds like an aggressive version of the, an over excited version of uh, the guy that does his voice. It's just that guy, but excited. Like he's really going to like, he's psyched, but I can't do that because I'm not in the right register for it. <laughs> uh, oh, and then for when we did uh, Grim and Perilous, I did my Rick. Man. Yeah, dude, that was so good. For, for Grim and Perilous Zweehander, I just did my Alan Rickman. And Alan Rickman is partially swallowed in the back of your throat. And you slow down. And so I am pushing it through my nose, but lower. So it is a low head voice. And I just add a British accent to it, but is the kind of accent that is Alan Rickman's. So if I were to do this in my normal voice, it is this is an American accent with that affectation. And this is if I was going to go down to the state, or maybe go to the state <laughs> fair and get a corn dog, if I was Rickman, but I was raised up in, like, mm, I don't know, Bama. <laughs> oh, it's nice. It's high noon. There you go. It's about time we get around to it. Mm -hmm. What you think about it over there? <laughs> that's that's sling blade <laughs> yeah <laughs> fucking love sling blade <laughs> yeah uh, gotta throw it out there every once in a while uh oh no arcos if i do invader zim it's just gonna break me he fernando. just yells oh uh, fernando <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay uh we had uh clint pulled pictures clint are you ready with that clint said he pulled pictures of uh Oh, we're so characters. Fun. Okay. Let's give it a go. That, like if he just showcases it, then what would I what would like either one of us make a voice of that? Whoa. Okay. Creepy spider lady. Hmm. Oh, that's easy. Okay, so you make that <clears throat> uh slightly breathy, because that'll sound mm -hmm. ominous. Uh you try and swallow the voice a little to give it that eerie affectation. And then you just drag out your S's because a spider with extra S's in its intonation, same as a, same as a snake. Sir, I would make it evil, like I'm breathy evil Gollum. And you shouldn't have come into here because I have so many plans for you boys. I really like that. I kind of want to make it with like a chittering sound to it a little bit. I am yeah. feel. I lost. Yeah, yeah. Like, like you can make it sound like um, it's like broken and clacky. Yeah, I like that. It was a little golem fruit. So it's hard for me to not swallow in the back of my voice and just golem. Golem just comes out whether I want him to or not. So I'm, I'm trying to just like screw around with like different postures in the mouth, right? So like just try to not stuff that the tongue right out of the like. But if I had a, that like female spidery looking character, then I, I would want to make it sound lusty's not the right word, mm. but lusty meaning hunger. Mm. Like the conversation she's Gracious. about to have yeah. is if you could talk to your food knowing you're about to eat it and it doesn't know. Mm -hmm. And then that adds a sinister quality. Like a so cat got a food. like Joker face going there. Yeah. Yeah. Like you'd give it a creepy, give her a creepy giggle. You've come into my home. 
<laughs> like just creepy, giggly. Oh. You know? Yeah. <laughs> Let's see what else have we got. Lobster folk. The hell's a lobster folk? Oh God. Let's oh, see this Donnie. picture. Is, this is gonna be interesting. So, Childrith, what are these from? Are these five E or are these from just wherever? I have no idea. Oh, that is amazing. That looks like a chul. That does look like a bit like a chul, except it's missing the tentacles. Yeah. Okay. What would that sound like? Um. Okay. So here's my logic. I got a hook. I just don't have a voice worked up. So my logic would be, um, underwater. Uh, sound carries really well if it is either really long, like whale song. Or if it's a lot of clicks and clacks, like ping. Mm -hmm. So I'd also, I'd almost make it like clickety clackety. Yeah. Um, the claws doing their thing. Yeah. Like the plates creaking. What are, what are you doing in here? You are not the belonging in here. And then I'd like Ooh. swallow and make gravelly and like have a lot of vocal cords to work with. Because I don't have the right mouth parts. I would want to make that character sound like common is a difficult language for him to use. Yeah. So that I'd also make him seem more primitive. I almost wonder if maybe it should be like a, a frayed whistly kind of thing. Like a. <laughs> oh, yeah. You know, so. I'm coming for you. Oh, I like that. You know. Are you breathing in when you do that? Uh, no, I'm breathing out. Um, I, that one hurts. I took my tongue like this in my mouth. <laughs> and I'm pushing. We're talking about over. tongue shapes now. Yep. Mm. And then I'm making this sound like a gargling in the back of my throat. So yeah. like, like a gurgle. And then, <laughs> and then that's me breathing in. And then that gets really inhuman real fast, but it also hurts. It's yeah. Like, inhaling sounds horrible. Like it, it, it hurts. Yeah, the enunciation gets almost impossible, but... Did that even sound like you're not welcome, get out? Could you even hear it? Uh, I can't even hear I'll myself order, right now. I okay. got like, a word or two out of that, but... Okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Hello, I'm <laughs> from the water domain. I saw Shiny with Moana. <laughs> <laughs> um, that's just a New Zealand song. accent is what that is. <laughs> uh, New Zealand... Uh, uh, Ooh. New Zealand. We're getting a lot of New Zealand. Time. New Zealand is Australian, except you push it through your nose and you make it really, uh, really relaxed. Like you're just here to have a conversation, but you're not going to make a big deal about it. And, so and you make, just, uh, uh, make some raps about the hip hop hippopotamus. Yeah. You make the, some rips about the hip hop hippopotamus and the rhinoceros. The hip hop hippopotamus, uh, my rhymes are bottomless. <laughs> the little Mao is having trouble with his look. You little cemetery and then a god. Ow! I All right, so what we got here? We got the Kuatoa, the fishy fish fish. The Kuatoa, yeah. yeah. So this is a um, uh, little Cthulhuian. Good night, you know? Kobe. The deep ones. Hey, mm. night, Kobe. I uh, yeah, I hate to do Gollum again, but that, that like to me, yeah. I see a Kuatoa, and my brain automatically goes to Murlocs from Wow. Yep, <laughs> like or, all that stuff. Really nasty. Just get out. Oh. Just do that with teeth. I just open your mouth. Really crazy. That's so crazy. That's so aggressive. <laughs> yeah, I mean, look at that thing. <laughs> I mean, he's got a freaking hook and a claw, like a man catcher. If you try to talk without using your lips. Whoa. <laughs> you try to do it with just your tongue. But it's impossible to do this because you're then, if you're doing this, then you're activating all the things that ventriloquists do, where they're not using their lips to create their consonants. They're just using their tongue. So their tongue is working over time to make sounds like a double U or an N. I like how your eyes started to look like a ventriloquist dummy when you did that. <laughs> just like dead eyed, just like. So now, <laughs> Jeff has summoned this NTC for the future. 
it will yeah, only be done at the TCs like this the entire time, but it will talk to them. Oh, no. Avoid P's and B's. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Too hard to do. All right. So, yeah. Aggressive fish face. That, that, I, I still stand by my aggressive fish. I like yours better than mine. I, I thought you got that out. What did you want over here? Get out of my water. <laughs> I, don't I don't want to be over here. <laughs> they all sound like angry, uh, harumphing old British guys. Get out of my water. You're not welcome here. <laughs> <laughs> We're like aggro, uh, like secret society old men. Yeah, just sitting there with the, like a cigar like, and, a, and a giant pipe. What are you doing? You're not welcome. Just bourbon, just chilling. <laughs> what are you doing here? Cthulhu be phrased. That would be so fitting for that setting, too. <laughs> just, now that's it. We just established Kuotoa. Yeah, Kuotoa is just chilling in the bottom. They got like portraits of dogs, you know. All Kuotoa talk with out there. Of our life. <laughs> oh, God, we got there, the Golden Dwarves. <laughs> Oh, go golly! Over here, we're gonna go over there. <laughs> <laughs> you're doing a you're doing goofy. Yeah, <laughs> you're a gully dwarf. Oh my god, I'm a gully dwarf. <laughs> oh, Jesus, Lord, it's a gully dwarf. Oh gosh, I'm a gully dwarf. For <laughs> sure, <laughs> too. From hey, Mickey, I'm a gully dwarf. <laughs> oh, hi there, Mickey. <laughs> hey, it's the goof troop. <laughs> <laughs> hey, did you guys see how many elves there? I'm pretty sure there's one. I think there was one, but my buddy says there was two. <laughs> two? Yeah, two. Two of them. <laughs> there was two. They were able to wipe out the entire village with just two. So you didn't see that one coming? How did you not see that one coming? <laughs> of all the voices, that one uh, had to be it. And I, yeah, that sounds fun for Gully Dwarf, but. For Gully Dwarf, I think the obvious is like a, a dumb Scottish. Like, you know, what would be dumb Scottish? Without like, sounding too aggressive, I try to make it sound like I would sound out of sound too aggressive. I try to make it sound like uh, uh, Spud from Train Spotting, the movie. Jesus. Um, but Stuff. Spud's really like, it's hard to do Spud's voice. Because mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> Spud. It sounds like he's a he's Scottish, but he's spitting out everything I says, and it's like it's so deep, it's so no, it's like goes through all up and down like this. So it's like pushing out through the face out of the, and like it sounds like noise. Mm -hmm. It's 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 hard to sounds like what he's trying to do. Well, I got tickets for Iggy Pop. Good on here. I think you just do a little this. Yeah, uh, if you know you know, you just don't let your mouth move. I just things just feel out like I'm feel like I'm gonna spit out of my mouth. Like, I don't like, know. I really like the goofy <laughs> voice. Well, I, I certainly do like that one. I, I think <laughs> Gully Dwarves might come back just so I can well, do. I that. think that's a good Gully Dwarf for right there. <laughs> so just for funsies <laughs> and to flip things on ahead. And by yeah. the way, uh, PCs that are listening, Cam, Clint, Ogle, Pan. Um, uh, I am retconning some stuff with it because I don't feel in good conscience streaming it with the names that I kept is uh, going to stick. So I'm going to change uh, all the names of them. Uh, but I invented a gear forged voice. Oh, interesting. Hmm. Gear forged. I'd almost think for gear forged, we would need to get a voice modulator. Yeah. Make it sound yeah. hollow. Or to mod it so it sounds machine like. Let me take a look. Um, this I need a picture. Sorry, Warforged. Yes, Warforged. Warforged ah. Eberron. My bad. Um, but she said Gearforged. Knew exactly what she's talking about. Yeah. yeah um. Yeah. But anyway, anyway, I uh, just for the sake of being able to put the redneck voice in my game, I uh, took in the world. Now, this group of guys hasn't been there, but there's a part of my world that's all these jungles that, for an elaborate reason, it's up. Uh. Oh, German. I'll come to German. I can do a couple decent Germans. Um, one sounds like the eff uh, effeminate German that's high-pitched. I have a hard time doing a calm German. My calm German is going to sound exactly like Lean. <laughs> Gear <head. Roll. laughs> Your forge is a freaking wheel. <laughs> uh. <laughs> but anyway, anyway uh, I, I put in my bit mud elves that were just rednecks. Yep. Like they were just rednecks, so I was like the idea of having ale where their ears don't go up, their ears go sideways. 
and sometimes down. <laughs> and that's just so I could put rednecks in my game. But I love the idea of redneck elves because I'm not an elf fan. So if I can poop on the entire race by putting a, a shameful version of the and uh boy did you ever. Thank <laughs> just you. Poop. thank you. Right it was, on there. It was, it was too much on that particular night. Okay, uh, we got requests. <laughs> request. uh, uh, so German, huh? It was the Germans. You're supposed to uh, push it out at the front of your voice, and you uh, try to sound clean, uh, but it is all very calm. It is calm in the same way that um, Russian is calm, mm-hmm. but it is very clean and very well enunciated. Uh, to keep in mind that. Uh, this is breathy, and oh, Warforged. Well, I don't see why. Oh, okay, we're establishing canon. Mm. Warforged sound German because yeah. I don't have a German accent in my game, and so if Warforged would be entering into the game. I don't see any reason why. Reason why? Hold on, I'm sliding into something else. I don't see any reason why that. Vorforge could not be German because German engineering one associates Germany and with accuracy and uh, a lack of humor, and at the same time the stereotypes are to have uh, precision. Yeah. So it would make sense to me that Warforged would be precise and slow, and if they weren't to have a German accent, they would at least have a slight German affectation, as if they are slower, calmer, and more prepared. <laughs> I like to think of the Warforged sounding like a train. What does a train sound like? You know, like the the train whistle sound? Like a high pitched, like, I can't even do it. Yeah, I can't do the sound either, but like the, like that wind kind of blowing through pipes, you know? So, um, I wouldn't even know how to do that. Like the idea that. The steam chamber, yeah, yeah, yeah. pushing through <gasps> makes their. Oh God, you're gonna break yourself doing that. <gasps> yeah, it's not gonna, it's gonna <laughs> you're gonna kill yourself. <gasps> yeah, um, it's, it's not gonna sound good, but I have it in my head. I just can't make that sound happen. Uh, and prompt to I use Russian for my deep dwarves or my mountain dwarves, the ones that rarely come up to the sky. Yes, yeah, like the harmonizer ah. that we can heaps. <laughs> I think we're back on that, actually. <laughs> what you see? <laughs> okay, I think we're back. Thanks, Fruitzilla. You keeping the lights Fruitzilla. on. Fruitzilla, Jesus. Yeah, it's gonna so buy that guy something nice. Yeah. So let's see, German. Like the the one thing that I uh, I was at like a a bar one time at a hotel. And I was with my girlfriend and this German guy came up and she was like really into like foreign languages. And this guy, I swear, was hitting on her. So I was getting yeah, he was. And um, she was asking, how do you say that you're drunk in German? And he said, the word is Zoftig. Right. And I was Zoftig. like, Zoftig. Zoftig. Right. And I'm like, yeah. what the hell does that mean? Yeah, yeah. It apparently means juicy. Oh. And I was like, mm, yeah, dick. Zoftig. <laughs> Yes, uh, of course it means uh, uh, drunk. Uh, uh, very, um, uh, yeah, so that's my down German. And then sometimes I add a bit of a melodic one. It's going to up and it's a little bit too much. It's like, yeah. That's getting quite German. I, li- I like to slide into the, yeah. The, the yeah. effeminate Hitler? <laughs> We're going to go out this evening and really paint the town. And then, uh, oh, <laughs> oh drow. Drow's uh. tough. I heard a bit on. <laughs> yeah, it is a little bit Swedish, but at the same time, yeah, it's, it's the German sounds like the nihilist. Yeah. yeah. It's not fair, Zabowskis. <laughs> His girlfriend cut off her toe. <laughs> it's not fair. <laughs> We are, we are nihilist Lebowski. We do not care. We don't believe in anything, Lebowski. <laughs> Sorry, I can, I can quote Big Lebowski way too much. Um, really tied the room together, man. <laughs> <laughs> Did it not tie the room together? <laughs> what are you talking about? Okay, let's see. So, uh, Drow, the joke I heard. Und keine Eier. Went. <laughs> und keinen Eier. 
Es ist geflüchtig Leben und Weiden. Simbabalu, da, da, da. Simbabalu, babalu, da, da, da. Und Kreiden, Du, du hast, du hast mich. Sorry. Ich sprach jetzt. Um, das sind yeah, einmal okay, so Sprachen für die Dance. No, no, no. <laughs> touch him, touch my monkey, love him. Would you like to touch my monkey? <laughs> um, yeah, uh, okay. for Swedish Arcos, uh, Arceos, 440. Uh, it's 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 hard not to do Skyrim. Mm. Yeah, it really sticks with you. Uh, uh, I would have been an adventurer like you, but I took an arrow to the knee. So you to lean into it, and it is like a German, except at the same time, you're really leaning in to make it like this, and it has to drop off when you're talking. Uh, That's good. I'm pretty sure that drow is, don't uh, speak, do they? They use hand signals. Yeah, it's but with language, drow, right? they do talk. And then the joke I heard, and sorry, I meander, everybody. Hi, I meander. Um, That's is It went around on D&D memes, I think. Mm-hmm. It's going to be hard not to think this. I'm going to ruin Drow for A guy wrote some DM because Drow come from a land down under. Oh, yes. They come from the land down under. Shouldn't they all have Australian accents? And I was like... <laughs> and now I can't uh, look at Drow without hearing it and I can't think of anything that sounds so good not good for drow like that is not what they should sound like because to me drow embody the worst qualities of elves mm -hmm. so they should just be a more sneaky sinister version of elves. i would just make them elves but the most evil british accents i could find like uh oh i'm gonna forget his name you gotta help me out everybody tywin lannister Mm -hmm. Uh, his real name, that actor. Oh, okay. Yeah. I, um, if feet British and at the same time, very exacting, I would have a little bit of my Rickman and at the same mm -hmm. time, push it forward and have very clear ways in which I talk to you would be my drow. But at the same time, um, I would occasionally have the gravel because I would probably lean towards gravel all the time. The whisper voice inherently sounds pretty good, untrustworthy. Yeah, and when you over enunciate things, it also clearly allows people to be understood. But at the same time, I don't believe anything you're saying because it sounds like you're trying to stab me in the back with your words. That's good. Hey, Levi. Do you know why there are so few, if no, vampire stories in Africa? Because they bless the rains down in Africa. No! <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, How do you get a white wedding really turned up a notch? You play a song about the, the, the heart, the, the cradle of humanity. Africa, sung by a bunch of white dudes. Yep. <laughs> and then a white wedding will be like, I love Africa! And it's like, it's the most <laughs> colonized, appropriated song. Oh, man. This is harsh. Oh, I, I feel like, I feel like T'Challa, I feel like if T'Challa, Black Panther, walks into a room and, and Africa starts playing, he's like, <laughs> I have to shut off your music now. <laughs> this is offensive to me. <laughs> it's like, it has to go. <laughs> what is this? Who is Toto? <laughs> <laughs> Don't you know Toto? They sing about Africa. Have they ever been to Africa? <laughs> I'm like, ah, ah, no. Elmo sings Africa? Dude, that sounds amazing. I can do Elmo. Let's hear it. Um. No! This is the song, la 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 la, Elmo song. <laughs> Hello, Mr. Noodle. What are you going to teach us today, Mr. Noodle? And then that's oh um. Uh, see, half works, huh? Let's see. Well, you um, did a drow. I should, guess I should probably do a drow, huh? 
Yes, yeah. so it does definitely sound down here. Sneaky. Very, very nasally. Sneaky. Very dark. Mm-hmm. Very rich. Yeah, I like that. I like that. Yeah. Half orcs. Mm-hmm. No, my voice feels pretty good on that. Uh, see, I think this goes back to our aggressive fish voice <laughs> a little mm-hmm. bit. I think you have to have some from uh, some Klingon up in there. I go my my default for half orc is again the stereotype. It's a uh, World of Warcraft where they go British, low class, deeper, and that's that's what, what is yeah. it? <laughs> yeah, stop touching me. <laughs> well, that's like orc orc, you know. Like uh, I would not do that if I were you. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, Cockney and Grunty. Yeah. Zug, zug. Oh. <laughs> zug, zug. Oh, <laughs> uh, um, no, let's see. If let's I were to do, if I were to do a half orc, I'd throw a little bit of British into it, and I'd go a little bit hmm. slow and gravelly, and to that end, it's a little bit pirate. But at the same time, you know, if I had any kind of if I had any kind of uh, orc to it, I think just the hook of saying the name of your own race, orc, is a good hook to pull you into it. We yeah, are so orc, it. you know. Like, yeah. if if it sounds good, no. Kermit the Frog. Um, Kermit the Frog is an easy uh, thing to do. All you gotta do is Shakira. <laughs> What? Because Kermit the Frog is Shakira. I'm on tonight, and if my hips don't lie, I start to feel <laughs> right. <laughs> uh, let's see. Uh, There's my... a she wolf in the closet. Oh <sighs> my god. See, I think my half work would be something like uh, how would I do this? The honor of my family. Yeah. I'm here for you. You say something like the fuck yeah or like yeah just metal yeah i don't have a picture for this yet <laughs> i need a line give me a li- give me an orcish line here for me uh by my axe i swear it by my axe i swear it oh yeah you're gonna break yourself that's ah, easy man that doesn't even hurt <laughs> i could do that one all night long <laughs> all night long <laughs> Tusked you with my tusks. Yeah, like because you're working around your tusk teeth. Yeah. Yeah. Just really just shove your jaw out there and just shove it through your teeth. To speak with an underbite. Oh, yeah. Because if you push your teeth forward, then already you're manipulating the way that your mouth works. You will drown in your blood. Let us destroy them, for they almost die. I will rip your entrails from your stomachs. Oh, you, you will slobber, but at the same time, great things about <laughs> working with the webcam is that no one can actually sense, smell, or see your drippings. Hopefully it wasn't too animated. I'll go back when I'm recording this later and we'll see. <laughs> but yeah, I think that, that one's an easy one to do. And that doesn't even hurt. Half work should sound like rednecks. Ooh, can I mix the two? Let's see, how would that go? Well, if I'm doing this, then all I have to do is... Because this is me talking with an American accent. I'm just pushing my teeth forward. So, if I'm saying this, and it's like... We can go on down to the seats diesel fest and uh, buy ourselves a handle. A good old handle to fit into a big old jaw. Boys, I got ourselves in the back of the truck, my very own pole. We're going to get that girl up there dancing in no time flat. Let me tell you what. They're giving ourselves some dip. We're going to go on down, and they're going to tear us off one. <laughs> we all get tore off. Oh, Minotaurs are... Libertera. Um... Minotaurs, we just always go deep. The only canon we have is Clint's voice, actually. Um, one of Clint's older characters was Kaz. And uh, Kaz. Uh, uh, yeah, back when we were uh, in high school, 
So Kaz's surname is Bullnads. B U L L N A D Z. 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 That's so. That's the punchy part. That's the that makes it great. Mm-hmm. All Minotaurs are deep. They don't have an American accent. They have an American accent. They don't have a British accent. They're just down and stay low. And in a weird way, that's a good question. How many subs can, do we have at the moment? I don't know. They're all yours. They're all fruits. <laughs> um, and at the same time, I can kind of see that logic because <clears throat> going down in the throat, keeping it low. I I grew up with cattle, and it all starts like uh, when a cow starts mooing, the pitch starts low. Yeah, it starts low and it ends up really high. It's like, it's like ridiculous. I think they talk like this. Maybe down here in this bottom mm. register. Honor. Or I think it comes from somewhere in my chest. Yes, like my chest is extremely deep and rumbly. And I have really flat teeth. The so. prairie thunder rolls in my chest. Like real heavy. Moo moo buckaroo. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Oh my god! Holy shit! <laughs> Whoa, buddy! Just killing it over here with the subs. Man! I think every single person in the group has a sub now. Years. Still more! It's 50! We have 50 subs now? Holy ha, shit! Ha, Thank now you, man! It's 50. <laughs> shit! Um, yeah, all hail the legend that is Fruitzilla. Jesus! I, 50 subs?! All right, I was going to make it a surprise fruit. But yeah, now it's happening. It's yeah, we, um, there. hey, fruit, uh, you're going to be an NPC. Um, uh, there is potential in the next game for the PCs to discover you, or at least hear about you. I'm not going to say, Fruitzilla, what you are and where you appear. I hope when it happens, you enjoy it. That, that is all. I don't want to ruin too much. I, I I try to avoid spoilers with my PCs as much as possible. The best is discovery in the game as it happens. That's the It's going to be awesome. Yeah, so... So yeah, you will become... Thank you, man. You are officially going to be in. You've done so much for us. It's the least world. I can do is to make you canon. So you'll be in there. So, you know, all you have to do, guys, is gift 50 subs... Amongst the channel, <laughs> and you have 50 subs, you can, can appear be game. in our own game. <laughs> <laughs> it, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a no bar. That's what it's set at. Right. Man, that is tremendous. Thank you. That's crazy. Uh, what other voices do you guys want us to do? Yeah, we got more voices for sure. I had another topic we could throw out, but the, these voices are going and working, so we'll just keep at it. Yeah, he has donated. He has donated seventy dollars in cash. That is nuts. Okay, teethling. We had two teethlings. Yep. And I am stealing a little bit in that I made them vaguely Russian, but not deep, like mm -hmm. yeah. Eastern European is what I was shooting with because I want them to sound exotic. Mm -hmm. I want them to sound knowledgeable, but I want them to sound just foreign enough that you don't entirely trust their. In tension because i want tieflings i want the prejudice to have a reason in a way for, for whatever the case may be like so i want them to sound like they're they're not really from here and to that end i want azamar to sound kind approachable like i mean azamar have voices in their heads guiding them so to that end i think that azamar could could roll with it a little bit better. Um, but uh, I think I did Z's with it almost like like Transylvanian, mm -hmm. like it Transylvanian is almost like um, yeah, it's Eastern European. It is not really like a, a Russian is in the back of the throat. It's like at the front of the face. So it is like a Russian accent, except it is all very simple and very close. And I dial it back a notch. I try to make it more calm and conversational. And so 
the guys, the only tieflings the guys have actually met besides Fulcrum inside of the town is, uh, is I, I don't do Austrian without Arnold. No, it's not. I, I don't <laughs> think so. It is not possible to do Austrian without doing Arnold. I'm trying to think. Here. I don't think it's an Austrian voice, but I think that would fit for a tiefling. Austrian. What is the the voice Aust- of the of the uh, Austrian? I I couldn't do Austrian without it sounding like my German. They yeah. sh- They're so close. Like, it would be so hard for me to separate one from the next. And my German is, I can only do two dialects of German. So, and they're an American exaggerated version. Yeah. So I'm not That's actually good. doing homework. I'm doing shitty hearsay. It's like, it's the male, it's the equivalent of Mel Gibson's Scottish accent in Braveheart, which <laughs> any Scott would tell you is a garbage accent. Um, like my it's Irish so accent. Uh, yeah. Uh. Yeah, hey, I'm a tiefling. <clears throat> yeah, so uh, you gotta take tiefling. It's like it's go down. And it's like you come in. And that's how you break a guy's jaw. Yeah, I do it. You try to swallow it in the back of your throat. Can you imagine if tieflings actually sounded like that? Hey, buddy, let's go. <laughs> hey, we are tieflings around here? <laughs> you know, just gonna get over there. Let's go ahead and do a little protection money, yeah. Yeah, we're gonna make these tieflings sound like they're, uh, you know, uh, they're like from uh, New York. It's just like New York, like they're from like Brooklyn. You like it? No, you're trying to make it sound like it's uh, a little ridiculous. It's like, uh, what are you looking at? I'm a tiefling. (laughs) Sorry, tieflings. You just can't take it seriously. Um, The funny (laughs) thing is, like the least present accent we have. (laughs) Have it, yeah, Boston. Yeah, I'm having said tieflings uh, go down to Worcester. Yeah, they're, they're wicked ridiculous. Trying to tell me how to beat. It's like I'm gonna punch you in the fucking jaw, you know. <laughs> so uh, I think the I think the tieflings would sound like this a little bit furious all the time. Mm-hmm. Just a little bit of an that would be like closer to the infernal side. Literally. Yes, and Fulcrum has established an interesting canon mm-hmm. that he slides from being really pleasant to being enraged, and yep. I kind of am going to steal from Fulcrum a little bit in that I like the idea that a tiefling, not unlike the Hulk, tries to keep that infernal side in check. Yeah. Almost always. by overcompensating. So when they speak to her, they're trying to stay kind and trying to stay pleasant. But at the same time, occasionally, if you're pushing it too deep, you really do not want to be here. Like, yeah. you just slide into something evil. Yeah, when I see the um, tiefling, I immediately think the Cardassians from Deep Space Nine. Oh, I like that. Yeah, just very just serious. And yeah. I'm here to just dismantle you. Uh-huh. I will take you apart. Wolves of the galaxy. Yeah, it's I like that. Always moments from an interrogation. Oh, I heard a Sararak Fruitzilla. Um, if you're doing undead you're doing all breath work and you're trying to get rid of vocal cords <laughs> yeah so and you will it'd be like by destroying your vocal cords yeah you'll destroy your vocal cords but you'll put like i am a sarah rack it is all whispers i am eternal like it's all Inhale work, yeah. Scrapey inhale work. But I am not ready. Yeah. Oh, yeah. that hurt. That's, that hurt me. That actually didn't hurt for once. Um, Everything is terrible. I've been locked down here with a copy of Joust for two centuries until Parzival came in here. Oh. So much pain. Let's see. Yeah, <laughs> the new Skeezer voice. Yeah, if you kill Skeezer off, he comes back as an undead. It's going to be terrible. It's just going to be that the whole just, time. Oh, it's so bad. Hey guys, I'm so bad. <laughs> <laughs> just, uh, that is not true. I, I I destroy my voice quite frequently. Nah, it's yeah. too deep. It's 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 like it's like deep waters run still. Everybody, Pan can't shred it. <laughs> 
There's so much depth. <laughs> it lives on. It's easier it becomes Elmo. <laughs> I'm pretty convinced, guys, by the way, uh, if the time ever comes that Skeezer dies, if you if you haven't been watching her game, Skeezer is a gnome illusionist, and he's just a little weird guy. Um, and I have decided that when the time comes that he actually dies, oh, if it occurs, he's going to deflate like a whoopee cushion. Oh, okay. We heard this again. So, like, yeah. I'm going to have him saying something like really important to Fulcrum, like, and just remember, Fulcrum, you've got to hold it together, and then just deflate like a whoopee cushion, like a balloon. And at the very bottom, he just squeaks off into the sky and just falls. <laughs> okay. Our chaos on your line about the button on your Adam's apple. I've seen that. Um, button on your David. Apple. David Cross from Bob and David on a season of Mr. Show uh, learned he could do a voice if he purposely um, moves his he could move it back here and it could oh, shove up it. his own voice. Yeah, and it kind of did. Whoa. That's yeah. weird. He's basically choking himself, but yeah, he moved himself really up here and he could do like a deeper voice. And so when he started doing this, he did it for a character. Wow, but then the best deeper, thing is he wanted to hide that he was doing that. So he, he moved his hand up here and they built a costume with a fake arm. Yeah. <laughs> So, and it just looked like he had like, uh, almost like a prince, <laughs> like, like ascot yeah. here just to hide his, uh, just to have this voice. So he moved it up here. Like he's like, like he's on a dating show. And then, yeah, he literally oh, kind of choked out into a new voice. That's funny. Cause you say his voice gets lower when you do that. When I push. So like, I'm just talking to do that. So like, while I'm talking, it just goes up like that. And it, it definitely sounds very high. Hey, oh. pan. Yeah, what's going on, dude? Libra, Libra Terra already <laughs> saw a character die like that. Well, that's some bullshit. Somebody got there <laughs> first, man. Nope, not gonna. I'm gonna clean that one already. It's somebody stole it from me. <laughs> Actually, it's maybe a new way to do the skeezer voice. Yeah, it's legit. Much easier. That's a concern for writing plot nowadays for me. Well, holy shit, that actually works. I don't actually have to do the voice on my own. I can just make it happen. Just by shoving my throat back. <laughs> Is that that's, that's actually kind of amazing? Is that sustainable? Can you? Is that going to hurt you? You know, I don't There's know what it's no going to do long term. Actually, There's no I, way that that is good for you. Right? Well, I have no idea. I mean, I don't feel like I'm choking or anything. It just it feels. I mean, does it hurt? Um, okay. Well, you know, who knows? <laughs> actually, I think that the, the, the rise and fall sounds a little bit more natural. <laughs> All right, Pan. Yeah, the curiosity's been that. the curiosity's been killing me, and we should. Not murder We're, our okay. voices. So <laughs> you said you wanted to talk about something. Oh, Popeye. I am what I am, and it's all that I am. I'm strong to the finish, cause I, I am space, space manage. I'm Popeye the Sailor Man. <laughs> Yours is better. Um, the Popeye voice, uh, Billy. Oh, God, it's the voice of Fry. The voice of Fry, the voice of Zoidberg, the voice of Stimpy, mm -hmm. Billy, it's killing me. He's also the red M&M. &M. He, uh, yeah. he figured out that uh, Popeye is done the same way Mongolians do Tuvan throat singing. Really? Yeah, it's the same. So it's he figured it out. He cracked. He's like, it's it's back in the throat, and I can't yeah. even do it right. Yeah, that's how I was doing my voice. Yeah, that's it. That's it. You, you're strong to the finish because yeah. I eat my spinach. Yeah, see, but your voice already pitched so low that it works. Well. Billy West, thank you. Our chaos, thank you. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah. I'm getting old, so like names are <laughs> slipping out of me now, real bad. I never had them to begin with. So, um, so you wanted that other topic? I don't know. It's it would be a more than an 18 minute conversation, but um, I was. What was I watching? I was watching or reading something the other day, and they were talking about the hero's journey and yeah. it being um, paramount. Uh, okay. It, well, it might have been, but it was saying basically, I think this actually might have been the show Dark I heard this from, but uh, they were saying that heroes go through three deaths in a story. So they go through the death of, <clears throat> of naivety, the death of innocence, and then death at some point. Okay. And I thought that was kind of an interesting take on like aging and like going sure. through childhood, sure, you know, like adulthood, and then you know going through the phases of 
the challenges you face as you age. Yeah. And I didn't know if there was any particular relevance, you know, in how you write your stories to those themes. Hmm. I, I don't, um, mm -hmm. because as much as I enjoy the hero's journey, it's hard to write D and D mm -hmm. according to the hero's journey, because that assumes you have full agency of the act PCs and don't. And if they have no intention of following on a hero's journey, then you're hamstringed. Mm -hmm. So I instead don't focus on trying to guide the PC's actions. I focus only on um, what threads I'll throw at them from the active interest of NPCs mm -hmm. and the actions of the villain affecting them. And then if that becomes a hero's journey, so be it. But a lot of the hero's journey I often see in D and D happens internally for the PCs. Yeah, I think so too. The way they're talking about how they're processing what they're doing, um, the way they're thinking about their own character, mm -hmm. uh, the influences they're choosing to glean from the other players' characters. Mm -hmm. um, so, in that sense, I'm very villain centric because. From a DM's perspective, the villain is the hero of writing a story. Like, without a villain, you have no story. He right. motivates yeah. everything. He's the linchpin. She's the linchpin. Um, mm -hmm. Whoever's the linchpin. So, right now, villains are driving everything. In and the PCs are aware of the actions of some and unaware of the actions of others. And then there's even more that are beyond the horizon that they haven't met yet. That may or may not be keyed into a larger narrative. So, mm -hmm. yeah, so they, yeah, you, yeah. I thought this other idea was interesting too. We talked about this in a previous episode where we're talking about how like writing a good bad guy oftentimes uh, could benefit from taking a character's motivations and personality. And yeah, I like taking that. it to the logical extreme. Yeah, that's that was a cool angle. Somebody popped that in the chat. I want to say it was Jowsum, maybe, and it was. It was a good nugget. I like that. But yeah, that, that was a cool one. Um, yeah, so this idea of... Uh, let's see. Where are we usually pass here? Yeah, so the... I, I thought it was just kind of interesting to kind of look at all these ideas of the hero story being reflective of a person going through life in general. Because, I mean, that's what a, a hero story really is. is about sure. being a child, leaving the home going out and then coming back home and trying to see yourself in that place again and knowing that you are different. You're now. different now. Yeah. yeah. And the hobbits, yeah, that, the hobbits yeah, exactly. from Lord of the Rings. Mm -hmm. And then this other concept that uh Libra Terra is quoting up there that there's like three deaths, you know, the one where um, you die when you're actually buried. And then whenever your final memory of you is gone, you know, so like, I yeah. think that was touched on at one point as well. And kind of a, uh, I always bring it back up at the Deadlands section that you guys that you ran. Yeah, I touched on those. Yeah, but uh, yeah, that's, we have we we built mechanics for that in a weird way. It's kind of cool. Mm -hmm. um, but the funny thing is, I I didn't actually plan it from that end. The funny thing was like it that's a that's actually a happenstance that worked out really really well that you guys read that level of poetry to it. I was taking my favorite themes from Wraith the Oblivion mm -hmm. and repurposing it. But most importantly, I am messing with cosmology in my world. I don't like the regular cosmology. I kind of want to make it my own bit. So mm -hmm. one of the big things I wanted is I wanted an explanation for undead. Mm -hmm. I wanted a reason. It was a good one, too. And so I was like, okay, I need a place where souls go. And why are some of them undead and some of them aren't? And why are there different flavors of undead? So... Mm -hmm. The best I could come up with is the ones that lose their personality and go insane become ghosts, wraiths, dangerous, uh, ethereal undead. Those are the ones that lose all their charisma. The ones that lose all of their intelligence um, become like a, a sad ghost story. Like mm -hmm. they don't remember who they are and they just things, but they're not necessarily malevolent. And then, uh, 
the ones that lose all their willpower are the ones that are basically the recycled souls of the undead. And I like the idea that you're floating around this afterlife and you have no willpower except to be called forth to ride inside of a corpse at the whim of someone. And then you just get sent right back. You're not even a full soul anymore. I just love the tragedy mm -hmm. of that. Yeah, or chaos, um, you're saying that looking at deaths is one way, but you prefer looking at births uh, and seeing it as like the, the, the hero's born, they're uh, born into hero ship and then born into uh, being the master. Um, yeah, I mean, I think birth and death are linked though, right? Like the concepts are, you can't move on to adulthood until you've killed the child, right? Like you have to you know, abandon your, the person you were prior to whatever change you experience. So like the, the, the transition through naivety is you, you learn about the world. You understand that it is more than you thought it was, that there's more complexity and richness to it, that it's more challenging and that your place in it is smaller than you thought. And then when you get into that, uh, death of innocence and the, you know, birth of the next phase, it's when you realize like, you know what you should be doing and yet you failed or you've had something taken from you in some way, um, like a loss of innocence, uh, you know, believing the world was a better place than it was, or um, doing something you hoped you hadn't done, or um, it could even be something like, I, I imagine like becoming a father, you know, you, you think of like, oh, my dad did this stuff, I'm never going to do that. But then you become a father and you go, actually, uh, you know, yeah. I think these that... things make a lot of sense. You know, yeah, you redefine a lot with that one. That, but that's a whole huge ball of wax. So, yeah, but, but I do think that's an interesting like connection into the hero mythos, right? Sure. Sure. I, mean, I don't know if that's because, what it is in culture, but it's well, on the hero mythos, the first heroes we have are our parents. Mm -hmm. Whether you attribute heroic aspects to them or not they're the icons of of human role model that you have at first and then they either rise to that occasion and become more and guide or they fall from grace and show you what not to be and so mm -hmm. so yeah yeah in that sense then when you become a parent yourself you realize the gravity of that and you either embrace it or you falter and run from it or hide from it in ways that are unhealthy. Mm -hmm. And that's where your bad parents come from right there. So I don't know. I know, I know it sounds like a motivation. Basically I decided that the, I need to be the dad for my kids that inspires me. Mm -hmm. Like I have to be the dad I want for my kids. So, right. Yeah. 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 So in that sense, I'm also like the strict dad and I don't let him do anything. I'm a jerk. Um, <laughs> but I try to make really clear that I love them and, and that, you know, they can always come to me and, and now we're entering high school and we'll see how that goes. Ooh, yeah, it's yeah. going to be interesting. Well, I mean, I, I, this is why I kind of want to touch on this topic if we had a lot of time was that I thought it was interesting. You know, your boys are coming into that age where they're getting into this transition point. Yep. You know, where your relationship is going to change a little bit. And, well, mm -hmm. not a little bit, probably a lot in, uh, in ways that are novel and new to you. And it's, it's interesting to me uh, how much of those experiences um get translated into game particularly since you're running games for them on occasion hmm. you know do you find yourself like oh wow injecting um, parenting elements into, oh yeah in the game yeah um right out the gate uh like first game they had a friend over that has since they, there's been distance in the way that when when your kids are like 11, 12, friends are coming and going so fast. Mm -hmm. You're not sure how many are long-term. This one turned out to not be 
long term of his own choices. But he's playing a barbarian, and I think mm-hmm. he was leaning into the stereotype a little. And they had a woman crying for help on the mm-hmm. run from goblins. I kept it super obvious. And uh, the moment they found the woman and killed the goblins, the barbarian picked up the woman and started choking her out to murder her for fun Whoa. because he because he could. And it was clearly a kid new to D and D exploring the consequences aspect. Yeah. And I, at yeah. one point had to step outside and be like, I don't want to, I don't want to run this. Like, I don't know, you know, so I had her scream, like, help me painting herself as a victim from the action of the PC. Mm-hmm. And when I threw a little bit of acting into help me, a couple of the kids stopped giggling and laughing. And then it got yeah. a little real for him. And then they stopped him. But it was like a creepy vibe for all of a little bit too long. But they're too young to understand it was even creepy. Because to yeah. them, the NPC I was playing was as disposable as a Minecraft villager. Right. Yeah. Like, you are a resource. You are here for my entertainment. You don't matter because you don't exist. And mm-hmm. they're not wrong, but it, uh, it was my parenting kicking in big time. I don't yeah. want to endorse this behavior at my table. Like, I believe in free will for my players, but mm-hmm. I'm not going to run like, a murder hobo rape party. I'm just not going to do yep. that. Like, well, and that's, uh, we were talking the other day about how you stop murder hoboing. And I think that was it right there. You just, you show that it's not a speed bump. It's not a, just a glossed over event. It's like, ha, 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 yep. Dead. Ho, 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 ho. You know? Yeah. If you make it have meaning to it where the deaths are serious, like they are in like a drama as opposed mm-hmm. to in a action flick where, you know, John Claude Van Damme runs in and snaps a dude's neck and then rolls out and, you know, does a split yeah. somewhere. Um, does a split yeah. somewhere. <laughs> I mean, Got to splits. <laughs> Gotta stay with the brand. Mm-hmm. Um, and, uh, yeah, it makes a big difference, you know? Yeah. And so right now they're better. Um, mm-hmm. They are finally after like us doing, I don't know, we've got to be on like the eight or ninth game. It's been a lot of games. Uh, we now have decided, Hey, let's, uh, let's try and do some plot. They finally want to do plot. We went through a huge chunk of their game. And I mean, huge where they were meta game in fighting mm. outside dumb feuds. Like you spoiled that book for me in class yesterday. I'm a stab your character. Um, Wow. Fighting over loot is huge again. Huge. Mm-hmm. They all want to loot the body first. It is old school behavior. I vaguely remember from us. But yep. It's been so long since I've dealt with it. It was weird at coming back again. And uh, they fought each other so much. I, uh, <laughs> I wanted to punish them. I was so mean. Um, <laughs> I, I did a similar thing we did to a friend. A friend wanted to be a murderer, so I gave him a fake reality where he was, but he mm-hmm. believed it was true. I did a, a version of that. Um, I They woke up in a misty area, so it was essentially like uh, Ravenloft mm-hmm. in a town where they had to hunt each other to the death like Hunger Games, uh-huh. and then once they killed each other, they respawned. Hmm. And then after they did this, like, how long are we going to do this? And I'm like, good question. You all hunt each other to the death for the next. You don't know how long. Like, this has been going on now for maybe a month. You've all died so many times. You don't remember how many times you died. And I just drag it out. It's because I wanted to take all the fun Mm -hmm. out of infighting. I wanted them to hate infighting so much and take all the value and joy out of it. I had it where I was, I would, I double, I quadrupled their damages just so they could one shot each other. Hmm. It's interesting. And and then, and then like it it was that, it's that whole dumb parenting tactic that doesn't work. We're like, I caught you smoking cigarettes, smoke the whole pack. You know, like it was that in D and D and eh, like they, they don't infight as much now. 
like yeah. as much. And now I've realized the problem is they're still a little murder hobo. So the mm-hmm. goal now is I've put them in a hostile behind enemy lines environment where they need each other. Yeah. So then you want a murder hobo. Fine. You're in enemy territory. Mm-hmm. Go for it. They are bad. Yeah. And I'm making it obvious too. Like it's a nation that is run by devils and demons. It is bad. It is face obvious bad. Well, I think it's interesting because at that age, I mean, it's it's a lot of testing boundaries, figuring out where you can go. You know, like what yeah. can I get away with? What is or is not okay? Because like at that age, you're trying to develop your own sense of morality that's independent of what has been given to you, right? right. Your parents. So you want to like see where everything goes. And I think that's what it is. It's like, oh, I'm in an age where I have to figure out if I am a dominant personality or if I'm a submissive personality, I got to figure out if, if I'm going to be, you know, um, you know, macho or not or whatever, you know, like all these different things. And in gaming, you get to try all that stuff without, well, it sounds like there's some actual real consequences happening outside of the game, but uh, it's, it's interesting to see, uh, you know, can I get away with this in the game at that age? You know, like, yeah, Oh well, no, there are actually some ramifications and, there is a a point where I need to hedge things back because it is not okay. You know, yeah. this behavior is wrong. But what it came down to is like, uh, especially the infighting, the infighting thing. There's mm-hmm. like nine of them around the table. So on a good night, they all get like five or six times to do anything that's their choice. And the rest of the time they're waiting on the rest of the other players. Yeah. Big the infighting was that. crippling our game. So I, I, I don't know. I don't know if it was the right choice. We'll find out, but it was the best I could think of because I needed to curb it so we could actually enjoy mm-hmm. doing anything. Well, oh. it's better that stuff than. Yeah. Libra Terra. It's because my it. boys don't really want to say no to so it's cool that they are mm. kind like that, but it's a lot of play. like yeah, nine players a, lot. a ton. But yeah, the name, I, yeah, the names are silly and fantastic. So that's <laughs> yeah, I think what's interesting about this too is that, like, yeah, it, it was said in the chat by uh, I'm assuming that says Dirt Man. Man asks for help, you help him. Uh, right. Yeah, well, I mean, when you got somebody, they're gonna like learn this stuff on their own any t- at some point anyway. But like. If we think back to like kids back in the day, what were they doing? They're like blowing stuff up with the fireworks, you know, yeah. torturing animals, doing yeah. weird stuff, you know, like, you know, picking on people and stuff. So like, would I rather them do that in a game? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, it's I don't want them doing real. it, but if you're going to like learn those boundaries, let's do it a non consequence place, you know? Well, we've hit midnight. We have. Holy. And God. I already feel, uh, a swollen something in the back of my throat. So we've done our exciting. work. Voice acting 101. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, yeah, that's a good place to stop. I don't actually know what our schedule looks like for next week. Let me pull it up real quick. We play one on the 28th ever storm. Mm-hmm. I don't know who are, what we're hosting as a guest on the 23rd. Yep, we have Duke from Geek Unleashed, I believe. Oh, cool. Yeah. So we're going to be rocking that one out next month. Nice. Monday. And uh, after that, we have Chris Jackson, uh, who is a writer for Game Companies. So he'll be Oh, writer. cool. And then after that, we've got Daniel D. Fox coming on for a uh, Zubi Hunter conversation on the Zubi 7th. Hander. Game design. Yep. Oh, yeah. Then That's- we got Cosmo Joe, who's going to be on October 14th. He's doing. Uh, essentially kind of like a real dungeon kind of thing, only it's like uh, a huge, huge, fully fleshed out model of a dungeon that you go That's through. That's awesome. It's pretty neat. That's and, uh, awesome. Yeah, so we got some good ones coming up, and we'll have more as we're scheduling more and more folks down the line. And we'll get uh, who knows who. <laughs> like we, yeah. We've got some interesting ones kind of poking around, so we'll see what happens. But um, uh, yeah, thank you guys so much for coming and giving us tons of things to voice act and uh, yeah, along with this I can uh, do voices all the time and voices are fun. 
God, you can. <laughs> You're so good at them. So thank you. Thank you very much. Thanks, Fruit, for more and more and more stuff. Fruit. Oh, my God, everybody. You. Big hands for Fruit. Yeah, everyone applaud and say thank you to Fruit Zilla. Uh, he's been rocking it out for us. Crazy. And so uh, with that, we will see you next Monday. Ta-ta. Thank you.